MRCS Part A is a pretty tough exam. In 2024, the pass rates were as low as 54%, meaning nearly half the people that gave the exam failed. That is brutal. However, I was amongst the few that passed in my first go. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the resources, timelines, syllabus, and all things MRCS you need to come up with a game plan to crush the MRCS Part A. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Waji. I'm an IMG working as a core surgical trainee in the UK, and I make videos about how an IMG can pursue a career in surgery in the UK. So without further ado, let's begin. So first up, what is MRCS? The membership of Royal College of Surgeons is a postgraduate diploma which assesses a doctor's knowledge, skills, and attitudes to enter higher surgical training. It consists of part A and part B, and if you clear both parts, you can sign up to be a member of one of the four prestigious Royal College of Surgeons of the UK or Ireland. IMGs can use a pass in both parts to demonstrate knowledge and skills necessary to gain full GMC registration and a license to practice in the UK. Now, let's talk eligibility. In order to register for this exam, you need to have a primary medical qualification, which is acceptable by the GMC or IMC for temporary or full registration. If you've never been on either of these registers, then you will have to provide your primary medical qualification via email to the specific Royal College of Surgeons you're registering to take this exam with. Now, let's talk about the structure of the MRCS Part A. You're going to have five hours to complete 300 MCQs. The exam is gonna be divided into paper one and paper two. Paper one is called the Applied Basic Sciences. It consists of 180 MCQs to be solved in 180 minutes with a 10 minute comfort break in the middle. And paper two is called Principles of Surgery in General, which consists of 120 MCQs to be solved in 120 minutes. You have six attempts to pass this exam. And in order to pass, you need to have a minimum competence level in both paper one and paper two and your combined score should be above the set threshold for the particular exam. You can register for this exam via one of the Royal College of Surgeons websites, whether it's England, Edinburgh, Glasgow, or Ireland. The difficulty of the exam will be the same regardless of which website you use to register. Next, let's talk syllabus. The syllabus can be broken down into 10 modules, which I've listed over here. Do note that not all subjects are gonna be of equal importance. For example, according to the candidate guidance I've linked below, Anatomy may have 75 questions, whereas pharmacology may only have eight questions. So you need to dedicate your time according to the weightage of each subject to be more efficient with your preparation. And speaking of preparation, here are my tips on how you should prepare for this exam. First up, before you start any kind of studying, book the exam. And the reason why I say that is by booking the exam, you have a clear date to work towards and knowing that you have a deadline will help you get out of bed, get off your phone and onto the study table. My next step would be to start your study preparation using a QBank. And the reason why I say that is by solving MCQs on a QBank, you'll gain some objective evidence highlighting your strengths and your weaknesses, which will help you efficiently focus your study efforts towards the areas that need improvement. So instead of going over the things that you already know, you'll be able to identify your weak points and dedicate more time and energy towards them. Secondly, a cue bank just highlights the important stuff. When you're passively studying text, you may try and memorize everything or you may try and memorize things that you feel like are important. But if you've already solved an MCQ in a cue bank, it will highlight to you the relevant stuff that you will be tested on. And the next time you're studying a reference material, you'll keep an eye out for it. So it'll help you pick up the things that matter more. And finally, using a cue bank utilizes a study technique called active recall. So what that means is you're trying to retrieve the information from your brain, and this helps with long-term memory retention. So given there's so much good evidence out there for using cue banks, I'd encourage you to start your preparation off this way. This is exactly what I did and it worked great for me. And not using a cue bank is the reason why I think most people recommend studying for longer than you need to because you're just preparing for things more inefficiently. Next, let's talk resources. For cue banks, I think eMRCS is a pretty good choice. It contains an extensive bank of questions. I really liked the brief explanations that they have under each question. It helps you track your progress with cool bar charts and you can flag any questions that you get wrong. There are other QBanks out there, but I found that this was enough for me to prepare for my exam. Next. Once you've solved a question and you've read the explanation, you may still feel like there are some key concepts that are missing. And if you want to supplement your knowledge for anatomy, I'd recommend using the Teach Me Anatomy website, which contains some amazing high yield illustrations and they've structured all of the topics in a very logical format, making it very easy for you to follow and saving you time on your preparation. 
that being said, I wouldn't recommend doing this website from A to Z, but using it as a reference for the anatomy concepts that you find difficult. The same goes for the Teach Me Physiology website, which I think is a great resource to use for those rusty physiology concepts. Certainly wouldn't recommend doing it from A to Z, but if you're finding a topic really difficult to understand from the MCQs, then this is a great go-to reference. And finally, having a study partner will help you stay consistent with your schedule, even on the days you don't have a lot of motivation, because overall studying for an exam is way more fun with other people as opposed to trying to do it on your own, in my opinion. If you don't have a colleague that's preparing for the exam at the same time, then perhaps you could consider joining Dr. Bishwai's Facebook group, which has a ready-made study community of people that are gonna be attempting the exam at the same time as you. you could buddy up with them to study together. You can even search for questions you don't understand the answers to or post questions if they haven't already been answered in the group. They've got some other great resources like study schedules to keep you organized and some clinchers that may be of benefit for revision. The night before the exam, I'd recommend prioritizing your sleep. There have been countless studies that have linked late night cramming sessions with poor recall and good quality sleep with longer term memory retention. On the day of the exam, if you live far away from your exam center, then I'd recommend spending the night in a hotel or an accommodation close to your exam center to minimize the travel distance on the day of the exam. It really makes a difference for the last minute nerves that you experience before an exam. On the day of the exam, don't forget to take your ID, show up at least 15 minutes early, and just believe in yourself. You've done the hard work, now you just have to attempt the exam. My final thoughts on preparing for the MRCS part A would be book the exam before you start studying, don't aimlessly study, focus on the high yield stuff more, start with a Q bank, your timeline should keep you under U stress, stick to your schedule, prioritize your sleep, have a steady community, minimize travel distance on the day of the exam and believe in yourself. And if you're an international doctor that's looking to work in the UK as a surgeon, then you might wanna check out my video about entry points for IMGs in a surgical career in the UK. I'll see you in the next one.